Hello everyone and in today's video it will be all about cloud functions so I am in the Firebase console let's go to function section right here let's click on it and uh, this will bring up this uh, screen and of course they say that uh, to use Firebase functions you need to upgrade your billing account but there is a work around it I will show you how to overcome this so we don't really need to upgrade any account or upgrade the plan for now so let's go ahead and click how do I get started right here and of course I will use node.js if you don't have node.js simply go to Google and search for node.js node.js is a server-side framework and you can download it and install it I will not show you how to do that because it is very very easy and there is tons of tutorials that can be tons of tutorial on YouTube so let's close this and let's get back right here and in this page they talk about the implementation pass and so on so let's go ahead and click get started to use cloud function and they have some examples but we will not use those examples so they say create a firebase project we already have a firebase project and include a couple of dependencies we don't need any dependencies so set up node.js and firebase cli so if you already have the node.js make sure to copy this uh, command and in your cmd or terminal make sure to install it globally npm install globally firebase tools so this is very important this is a package that will help you to create the cloud functions from the command prompt right here so you can paste it and click uh, enter to download and that will go ahead and install the Firebase tools for you. The next step is to log in in the terminal using the command Firebase login. So go to the terminal and write Firebase login and hit enter. And this should open up a browser for you. So click yes for now. And this will open up a browser for you and it lets you choose the Firebase project account, the Gmail account. I'm gonna choose mine right here. Make sure to choose yours, the one that have your Firebase project, okay? So now it will tell you that we need to access the Google account. Click low and uh, it successfully connected with the CLI let's get back to here and of course as you can see success logged in as and then your email will be here so now we successfully connected our project with the CLI Firebase CLI so let's create the Firebase function so as you can see we can use this command firebase init function and to specifically create a project a cloud a cloud function project for you so let's go ahead again and paste this command right here and click enter and it will ask you a couple of things okay so you need to proceed click yes or y and choose an existing it will tell you to choose an existing project or create a new project so we'll choose an existing project because we already have the android project and then it will show you the list of projects that you have and of course for now we ha i have a couple of projects but i will choose the one that uh, we are using in this tutorial so i will choose this and uh, they will say that the function directory will be created in your will be created in your directory and then it will ask you 
for the language and I will use the JavaScript or Node.js if you know TypeScript feel free to use it and then it will ask you to use ESLint I will say no because we don't really need it so now it will ask you again to install the dependencies using npm npm stands for node package manager so when I hit yes it will start downloading the necessary dependencies for this cloud function or this Firebase cloud function project so click Y type Y and hit enter and it will ask you and it will download things right now so I'll pause the video for now after that is done go ahead and open up the functions directory that is created by Firebase and you will find a bunch of files and we are only interested in index.js for now to open it you can use any text editor you want but I recommend using VS code because VS code is uh, very easy to use and it is lightweight so you can download it from code.visualstudio.com and of course it looks good so let me just go ahead and open up my VS code inside this directory now I just opened the functions directory and you would have of course a package.json that have a couple of uh, dependencies and this kind of stuff like a configuration file for your cloud function and then you, have, you would have the index.js and git ignore and eslint.json anyway let's open index.js and let's get rid of this code and let's write our own code now let's go ahead and start writing the cloud function and the first thing we will import the cloud function or the firebase dash functions library using the require keyword and store it inside functions property and then we will need to import firebase dash admin library or the package and store it inside the admin and you may be asking why we need that because we need to access the database okay so we need the admin firebase dash admin and then we will initialize the app using admin dot initialize the app and in order to create a function we will call exports da and you will specify the function name and in this case I call it send notification you can call it anything you want and then an equal sign and we will use the functions package and dot database dot reference slash notification slash notification id and you may be asking what the hell is this and functions in firebase have a couple of ways to trigger you can trigger a function for example when you write to firebase when you write to firestore or for example using an http request or when a specific operation is re is done on the database so this is what we are doing right here we would say that we create a function that will be triggered on a database operation on this reference so every time a child is created inside this reference no slash notification and then an id this function will be triggered so in the android application in the next few videos we will write data to a specific location and in this case it is the slash notification to trigger this function and eventually send the notification so we would say on create and every time a data is created okay there's a couple of functions if you want on delete or on child remove and so on so every time that is created we will have the snapshot and the context snapshot is the data that has been created here okay so we can access the data and from the data we will get a text that is a notification text you will understand more in the future about this so from the snapshot we get the text and then we get the receiver id 
and if you ask asking why we need the receiver id because if you remember we have the token and the token is stored under the receiver id so in order to get this you will need this and this is the receiver id and then we will get the notification title for example a new message has been received and so on we will send this all from the android application now we need to get the token and for that we need to access the admin and then the database reference slash tokens slash receiver id as you can see tokens slash receiver id and then we will call once value and we want to get the value of this specific location and it will be this value right here and this is the value of the token and then we will use the function as a callback to get the data and the data value will be the receiver token and let's construct the notification payload so we create the variable called payload you can name it anything you want and here we will construct the notification the title will be equal to the title the value of the constant right here that we will get from the snapshot and then the body will be the text and the body will be something like hello there and something of a kind and then we will specify the icon and we will set it to default and finally a click action and it will equal to cob move abnas firebase notification firebase push notification a click action is just a tag that we will use later to open a specific activity if the app is not in the foreground so if this is the background and the user clicks on a notification it will open a specific activity and this activity will be associated with this tag so it is just a tag you can use any string you want but the uh, best practice is to include your package name and then after the payload is ready we will call admin messaging we're accessing the messaging right now and we will call send device and then we will pass the receiver token and the payload finally we will close this thing off now it's time to deploy the function because now it is just on my machine we need to deploy to the firebase project let me just open the terminal from here or of course you can use uh, the cmd the command prompt for the windows if you want so for now let's go to right here and let's see how to how you can execute the the function or how you can deploy the function to firebase so by copying this code firebase by copying this command firebase deploy dash dash only function and let's go ahead right here paste it let's get rid of the dollar sign right here firebase deploy dash dash only function to start deploying the firebase function for us so now as you can see it is start deploying the function to firebase firebase cloud functions so now we have this cool error http 400 billing account for this project is not enabled and you must enable it so so we don't really need to do that what we can do is go to right here go to the package of json and this node engine from 12 downgrade it to 8 save it and go ahead and try again so firebase requires that for node.js 12 and above you need to enable pilling account but for 8 and down for for node.js 8 you don't really need to enable the billing for now at least because in uh, i think in march of this year march 2021 it will stop executing and this way will not work and you need to enable the billing account then for, but for now it works perfectly fine and now it start now it start uh, deploying the function as you can see this is the name of the function and this is the name of the server and it is start deploy the function right now and of course they say it is deprecated because we downgraded the node from 12 to 8 but if you are working in a real warlord project not a tutorial just like this you must enable the billing account because after months or two this method will be stopped 
and you will, you will get into a lot of trouble so now as you can see we have deployed the function successfully and of course we have a warning right here like i tell you that the node.js function is deprecated and it will stop running on uh, 15th march so if you are watching this video after this date make sure to enable the billing account so in order to continue so let's go back to the real-time database and from here choose function and we should be able to see the cloud function that we have deployed in this video as you can see this is the name of the function and it is triggered by a database operation and on creating this on creating a data inside this uh, child and this is the region and of course we have some warning right here that because 15 February no longer support new deploys starting 15 March no longer support execution and uh, but for now it will work fine and of course we don't really need to upgrade at least for now and everything should be fine and in the next video we will go ahead and start sending notification to other devices from the from the android application thanks for watching if you like the video go ahead click like and subscribe and enable the notification and if you have any question feel free to ask me on the comments or dm me on linkedin or instagram you will find the links in the description thanks for watching